When I was seven years old, I was in the front yard playing football with my brother and the boys on the block. Now, I'm not talking about flag football. I'm talking about football, football, tackle football. I was a Texas tomboy, and I was fast, and I was good, and no one could catch me, and I loved it. These are some of the fondest memories of my childhood. But one day around dusk, I was running the ball, and I felt something powerful crash into my face. And I didn't know what it was. I, I saw stars like Looney Tune stars in my head. I probably blacked out just a little bit. And uh, when my mother saw me, I was covered in blood and she absolutely panicked. So she takes me to the emergency room. She rushes me to the ER. When I get to the ER, the doctors and nurses, they're in triage mode. They are answering questions. There is a sense of urgency to answer a key set of questions so they could adequately treat me. Who is this kid? What are her vital signs? When did this happen? Why am I in here by myself and nobody else helping me treat this kid? And how did this happen? Who, what, when, where, why, and how. A sense of urgency. They needed to answer those questions in order to treat my injury. As a local news reporter in New York City, this is what I do every day. I operate, operate in triage mode. I answer those key questions. Who, what, when, where, why, how, with the same sense of urgency because the answers to those questions m are of critical importance to somebody. It may not be you, but it's of critical importance to somebody. And just like in the emergency room, I don't know what's coming at me. I don't know what's coming in the door that day, but I have to be prepared to answer those questions in a finite period of time. So let me take you to 2014, July 2014. The newsroom gets a call that there's an officer involved shooting, or there's an officer involved death on Staten Island. And our news truck van, there goes that news van again, we start rolling, like we are rolling just as fast as any first responder because back in 2014, cameras on your cell phones were not as common as they are now. So that was a big deal. Officer involved death on Staten Island it's all caught on video. We rushed to the scene. All of the press corps in New York City were all rushing to the scene. And I will tell you something about the press corps here in New York City. The finest print, broadcast, digital journalists and photographers on this planet. You have to have a special set of skills to be a New York City reporter or photographer. And is there competition? Yes, there is competition, just like on the football field, right? They have a finite period of time. You have four quarters. Each quarter lasts 15 minutes each to get enough yardage, to get the highest score in order to win the game. So that's a healthy competition, and that's the competition that happens with news agencies. And that competition, the root of that, is not against each other. It's not cutthroat. It's about who can answer those questions who, what, when, where, why, and how that are of critical importance to someone the fastest with confirmed vetted information. So let me tell you the basics, because a lot of people have only seen news on television. They only see movies or TV shows and lots of depictions of how reporters operate, which are not always representative of how we actually operate. So I'm going to tell you some of the basics that are so often misrepresented and misunderstood about reporters. First of all, what is the root word of news? It's whatever is new. It's not old. We don't say we're going to watch the old every day. We're going to watch the news. 
So it's whatever is new. So the news cycle churns itself. There's, there's no need to churn it because it's churning because it's whatever is new at the time. Every day, we have an editorial meeting where we talk about the news of the day. And it's like a Jenga puzzle because on one hand, you have everything that's happening. And then over here, you have the resources to cover it. And 10 times out of 10, the list of everything that's going on is three times as long as the resources that there are to cover it. News falls under two basic categories. There are events, and then there are issues. And sometimes there are events that are underlying issues, uh, underlying dynamics of a systemic issue. So for example, 16 people die in the Bronx in a high-rise fire. That is an event. 16 people die in a high-rise fire because the building did not have the self-closing doors as mandated by the Department of Buildings is an issue. So they're both related. How do we get our news? Well, three basic ways. We get them from the police scanners. And that is a skill in itself for whoever works on the assignment desk to listen to multiple municipal departments and what's going on and learn all of the codes. We get them from press releases. Mayor Adams is having a press conference about the opening of a park in Harlem. But the most important and the highest impact stories that we cover are the ones that viewers call us and tell us about. And there should not be any trepidation in doing so. There should not be, well, they didn't do it the last time, so I'm never calling again. Because remember, we have this long list, and we, there, you can't only get to certain list of events and a certain amount of resources. So you keep churning, you keep churning. Now, the way I approach news is that I tell you that uh, my dad was a, was a football coach. I, I, I like football. And you know there are levels to football. So we're going back to football for a minute. There are levels to football. You have freshman football. You have junior varsity football. You have varsity. Then you get to the college level. Then if you're lucky, you get to the NFL. And if you're really good, you'll be successful in the NFL. Why am I bringing this up? Well, national networks, this is how it works. National networks are in constant communication all day long, every day, about the biggest stories and the most high impact stories in those neighborhoods, in those cities, in those states. Let's go back to Eric Garner, 2014, the man who died when we got the call in 2014 that there was an officer-involved death and there was a death in Staten Island. It was, the entire press corps was there. The entire press corps answered those questions. How did it end up on the national news the next day? They saw it on local news. They found out. So just like the colleges and the pros, they, it's a feeder to the pros of the networks, that is how news filters up. And so there has to be a level of respect for what happens at the grassroots level. And there has to be a covenant on the grassroots level in order for it to impact change. Earlier this week, we received a phone call. A building had no hot water, had no heat. Eyewitness News showed up, the water and heat came back on <laughs> within a couple of hours. Is that the end result all of the time? No, it is not. But you have to continue to be steadfast with any time you are striving for progress. Now, you have the issues, you have events, you have events that underlie systemic issues. 
Did y'all tell y'all I was a football fan? <laughs> My approach to covering the news, answering all of these questions, who, what, when, where, why, and how, really is rooted in my father's coaching strategy. It's very methodical, it's very forensic. Every day is the Super Bowl because you're only as good as your last game. And you're only as good as your last story. And think about the personal connection that is built with the community when you are the first one to arrive and there's a deceased person within feet of you and there are grieving family members. Just think about the community partnership that takes place when we get the call about the no hot water. You are at your lowest point. You need help. And there's power in that if it's harnessed the right way. You just have to tap into it. But we talked about the misrepresentations, right, of, of news reporters. And so that is a deterrent. Because is the news really on my side? Darla, you're talking about all of this stuff. That's not how I know the news. That's not how I see it to play out every day on TV. You're absolutely right. What I can say is that local news networks, we have standards and protocols to vet information and confirm stories. Sometimes we have to double source information. So perhaps you might say, oh, I saw that on TikTok, I saw that on Facebook, I saw that on Instagram. We're talking about confirmed vetted information. Whatever is not confirmed and vetted, that sows a seed of misinformation and it spreads like wildfire. It spreads like weeds. There are also times where you can get your news maybe from a national outlet. Well, the backbone of a no local newscast is 30 minutes, 30 minute segments. Take the commercials out, it's 22 minutes. There's a lot of ground to cover in those 22 minutes. So you have to be, you have to ingest volumes of information in a finite period of time. I basically write a term paper every single day. I research and write a term paper every day. When I worked in South Carolina, one of my first stories in news, I was sent to the federal courthouse in Columbia because the South Carolina state government sued the Department of Defense because they did not want nuclear waste being brought to their neighborhood. So a lot of people don't know, there's a nuclear plant right outside of Augusta, Georgia, where James Brown was born, Savannah Riverside. It's hot, there's no AC, it's not glamorous. <laughs> You, 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 you know, the, bu the, the bugs are going. The seats are hard. They are not comfortable. And reporters are sitting in the jury box, and it's a scene from a movie listening to science talking about enriched uranium and plutonium buttons. And we've been watching this trial all week. What's going to happen? Are they bringing the nuclear waste? Are they bringing it? Are they bringing it? There was a verdict. At 4.15, at 5 o'clock in 45 minutes, I had to process all of that information, make it make sense, and let you know why it is important to you. Some people tune in to the cable networks. They have a 24-hour wheel to fill, so 22 minutes, versus 22 hour, 24 hours. And what you find with cable nets is that depending on what time you tune in, you might tune in to an opinion show as opposed to a newscast. And research shows that the viewers of cable news align themselves with networks with their own personal views. So there's really the diversity of thought and introduction of new concepts and ideas and 
other information that you might get somewhere else may be absent in those cases. So you have, there goes that news van again. You have the national networks who look to the New York City News and the Philadelphia News and the Bedford, Connecticut News and the Fort Worth, Texas News to find out what's going on. Oh, that's important. We need to tap into that. And then you have social media, which we all empty our brains at the end of the day to decompress. You just have to be mindful of what the source of the information is. You know old folks love Facebook, right? <laughs> My mama loves Facebook. So she, she, uh, said to me, oh my gosh, did you see this story? Uh, this, there was an interracial couple, and because of the political climate, they got a divorce. I said, well, what's the source? I saw it on Facebook. Well, what's the source? <laughs> it was a news article on Facebook. What news agency posted it on Facebook? So I go down my news reporter rabbit hole, because I do a term paper every day, so do 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 it did not exist. So we have to be accountable for what we put in our brains. Because you you're accountable for what you put in your mouth and your body. We have to be accountable for what we put in our brains. We have to be accountable about how we interact with the community. And there is power that has not been tapped into that can be an agent for change. So again, you're like, Darla, yeah, 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 that's nice and lofty, and that's nice, but I don't like this, and I don't like that. And that is not the way local news works. It doesn't work like that in New York. It doesn't work like that in the South, in the East. It doesn't work like that anywhere. You're right, but it should. And until you know how it's supposed to work, you can't hold it accountable for how it's supposed to work. So that is why I'm here today sharing my playbook for my Super Bowl winning strategy that I've developed covering news for the last 30 years. Thank you.